talk about completing the square and it relates to that square root method we did yesterday. Okay, completing the square, the whole purpose of this is to find the roots. Okay, sometimes it's not super pretty like what you had yesterday where you're just going to take the square root of both sides and move things around. Sometimes you have to do a couple of things before that. Okay, so we're going to talk about what you need to do in order to make that happen. All right, so that whole square root method is towards the end of completing the square. Now, there are a lot of words going on here. I am going to use my notebook paper after I write over here to do the examples because there's not a ton of space. All right, um, I don't normally look at the examples in the book, but I want you to, I'm going to translate for you here. Before I translate, there are a couple of things that I want you to remember. A while back when we were factoring, I gave you those special factors that look like this. It was the paper that had... Um, the pencils all around it. Do you remember that? It was a difference of two squares and perfect square trinomials. And the pattern was like this. Do you remember that? Where you could take the square root of the first one and the square root of the last one. And as long as the middle was two times those, you would say whatever the square root of the first one was, sine of B, square root of the last one. Or if it was a negative, then it, you had a minus in the middle. This is going to be the key today. Okay? So I need you to keep... Now, remember, you don't have to keep these memorized. They are on your formula chart. Um, I'll give you a, a numerical example. If I said um, x squared minus 8x plus 16, okay, if we're using the pattern, because these are this is a perfect square trinomial where the first term is a perfect square and the last term is a perfect square and this middle is two times those, right? What is the square root of x squared? x, what is the square root of 16? 4, is this 2 times x times 4? Is 8 2 times 8x, is that 2 times x times 4? No. Yes. So we can simplify it this way. Do you remember that now? Yes. Way back when? Yes. You can do the cross puzzle. It's going to just take you longer to get the same thing. All right. So I need you to keep these two things in mind as we do this today. All right. Let's go back to all of these wordy things. So they give us an example. They say x squared plus 10x minus 6 equals 0. Remember, if y is 0, we're looking for a root. Now, this says isolate the variable. Okay, we're going to translate that into step 1 is move C. So that's what they did. Okay, if we're isolating the variable terms, we're just moving C. They went plus 6 here, they went plus 6 here. Are you with me so far? Okay. Step 2 is extremely wordy. Transform the left side into a perfect square trinomial. Divide the coefficient of x by 2, square the 5 to determine the constant. Say what? Okay. Let me translate this. When we do this and we move C, I want you to make sure when you rewrite it that you leave a blank. Because our goal in completing the square is to fill in the new C. And when we fill in the new C, we want to make it be a perfect square so that we can do this process, okay? So we're going to leave a blank there. We still, I'm sorry, that should be equals. We still have a 6 on the right-hand side. We still need to write that. But I want you to remember in all things algebra, if we do something on the left, we have to do it on the right. So whatever I end up putting there, I have to put over here. Okay? 
So we're going to move C and we're going to leave some blanks. Now, in order to find C, I'm going to go refer back to my example up here. We know that C is 2 times whatever the square root of A was times whatever the square root of C was. So this 10x right here, 10x equals 2 times A times C. You see that? Well, A, A is 1 in this equation. A is always going to be 1 when you complete the square. It just makes life easier. So I can scratch out my A. 2 times C equals my 10. We can even scratch out the X. How are we going to solve that? How do we find C if 2 times C equals 10? What do we need to do? We're going to divide by 2. And we get C equals 5. Are you with me there? So step two, we're going to simplify this over here. All of this fabulous wording. We're going to take B and we're going to divide it by 2. But that doesn't give us the perfect square we need right here. Think about it. When I got my 4, this was 2 times 4 times x. But how did my 4, how did I get 4 from my 16? What did I do? I'm going to have to square it. 4 squared is my 16, right? Because that's the inverse of my square root. So when we come over here, whatever we're going to do, we're going to do b divided by 2, and we're going to square it. Now we have a perfect square. Now it's pretty. So we got 5. We're going to square it. That's where this 25 came from. If I add 25 on the left, I have to add 25 on the right. Are you with me so far? We're going to do one where it's not all jumbled like this. They went ahead and collected like terms. Step three, step three is easy. We're going to factor. Yep. It's going to be an x squared. That's the only time they'll ask you to complete the square. If it is not an x squared, we're going to learn um, on Friday another way. There's so many ways to find roots because they're going to be ugly. All right, when we factor this, this is now that perfect square trinomial. Square root, square root, look, x, sine of b, 5, quantity squared equals 31. Now this is what we did yesterday. This is square root method, okay? So step four, you can say solve. All right, so I want to, with you guys, I want to do example A and I'm going to do example B. And I'm gonna, we're going to do these four steps, okay, without all of this jumbled extra stuff, right? Because that can get a little confusing. Are you ready? No. All right, let's look at A. So A says, and I'm going to use notebook paper because there's not a ton of space. And that's just easier for me x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 11. Okay? Step 1, move C. What's my C value? How do I move it? We're going to minus 3 on both sides. So we get x squared minus 8x. And I'm going to leave a what? I got to put, it's always going to be plus a blank. Always a plus equals 8 plus a blank. Because whenever you have a perfect square trinomial, it's always plus C. Always, always, always. So whatever you put your blank, it's always a plus. All right. Are we good so far? Step two b divided by 2 quantity squared. Well, what's b? Okay, so here's the, the it's a negative 8 on this. Sometimes it's a positive. The sign doesn't matter because you're going to end up squaring it. And when you square a negative, you get a positive. So if you want to deal with your negative, that's fine. You don't have to. This is one of the few times in algebra that sign does not matter. 
Okay, so for three years you've heard me tell you sign, sign, sign. It doesn't matter this time. So I have eight and I'm gonna divide it by two and I get what? Four and I'm gonna square it and I get 16. If I add 16 on the left, I have to add 16 on the right. How do we feel so far? Have I lost anybody? Okay. It, it looks a lot nicer this way than all of the stuff in the book. All right. Step three said what? We got to factor it, right? So what's the square root of x squared? X. Sine of b. Always the sine of b. Right? If you want to make a note, sine of b. What is the square root of 16? 4. Right, if we foiled x minus 4 times x minus 4, I'm going to get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Equals what? 24. All right, process that for a minute. All right, now this looks like what we did with the square root method. So I can take the square root to get rid of my squared. I have x, actually I don't need a parenthesis. Sorry, when I take the square root, my parentheses goes away. X minus 4 equals, be careful here. If I take the square root of 24, it can be what kind of numbers? It can be a positive or a negative. Now, you are probably wanting to leave that square root of 24. When we did simplifying radicals on Monday... You can use menu two, three, if you are feeling kind of tired. I'm a little tired. And we'll get our factors two to the third power times three. So I've got a pair, right? So this is two times two times two times three. I've got a pair. Where does my pair go? What goes inside? Six. Do you see how that lesson Monday relates? That's why we had to do it then. I need you to simplify if possible. Okay, I realized on our assignment yesterday we had that square root of 12. I took it. I need you to simplify if you can. What's our last step? How do I get x by itself? Plus 4. Can I add 4 to a radical? No, I get 4 plus or minus 2 on the square root of 6, that is the root. Now, you could, if you wanted, you could go to your calculator and you can say 4 plus 2 times the square root of 6, and you get, you can make it a decimal if you wanted, we'll call it 8.9. You could do 4 minus 2 on the square root of 6, and we get, we'll call it a negative 0.9. Those are your roots, okay? You're probably going to see it like this, but if you wanted to make it a decimal, you could. If you wanted to check your work, then move your 11 over, and you can check in the calculator, plug in x squared minus 8x. If I move my 11 over and I subtract it, I get negative 8. So I could go to my graph, and I can say x squared minus 8x minus 8. Very ugly. But I could do my menu 6, 1 to check my work. There is my negative 0.8999. I can come over here. So you can still use those strategies, and you get positive 8.9. And in your head, you're like, then, Mrs. Ray, why are we completing the square? You need to know how to complete the square because they like to give you all of this work and say, where's the mistake? And in that case, this is not going to help you. Okay? It will help you check your work, but it is not going to help you do it. All right? So let's look at... B, yes? Are we feeling okay right now? A little bit? Anybody feeling a little overwhelmed? Okay, we're going to do another one. That's okay. 
it's it's new. Now B is a little ugly. B says x squared plus seven equals two x plus eight. Well, before we can do any of the move C and all of that, we need to put it in almost standard form. We need to put at least the x squared and the x on the same side. Well, here's my x squared. I can go ahead and move my C. So I have x squared equals 2x plus 1. Are you with me how we got that? Okay, but I need to put my x squared and my x on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and move my 2x over, okay? So now I can start. I have x squared minus 2x. I can leave my blank because I've technically moved my c already. Is equal to 1 plus my blank. You're like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work before we even started. You have to get it set up correctly. You need your x squared and your x on the same side. Now you can do this. Do you want to try it or you want me to do it with you? You're going to try it. Try it with your table. We've already done step one of move C. Step two, remember, is B divided by 2 quantity squared. And then you can factor and solve. All right, so take a moment and then we'll go through it. All right? All right. Should have gotten one plus or minus the square root of two. So you completed your, you did your B divided by two squared, you factored, and you moved everything over. So what I'm going to ask you to do, okay, is on page 473, um, I'm going to ask you to do numbers 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6. I'm going to change directions on 7 and 8 to just complete the square. We're not going to, you can do way more with this, but I feel like it's going to overwhelm you. Um, so what I, those are the eight I want you to do now. One and two are set up very nicely. Move your C, all of the things. Number three is actually set up very nicely. If you wanted to move your two to the right so that it looks better for you, then do that. When you get into four, five, and six, things I need you to realize um, these are not set up nicely, right? On four, I would move my four X over. And then I would move my 32 to the other side. Okay, so if you wanted, write it like this. So you can move your four X to the left and your 32 to the right. Are you seeing that? This one is, oh my goodness, ugly. You really, really want that A to be a positive number. Um, what I would honestly do is I would move my negative 2x squared over here and move my negative 7 over here, right? So try to make A, try for A to be positive. Same thing here, I would move my x squared to the left, my 6x, and then my 1. This one's already set up nicely. Now, this one has a negative x squared. Um, what I would do, and I'm going to show you, is I would go ahead and factor that negative out. x squared minus 8x plus 6. And just kind of... For completing the square, because you're finding roots, you don't actually need that negative one. If we were doing all this other stuff, that would tell you it's going to open down and blah, blah, blah. But you can leave it like this and still get your answer. Okay? Does that make sense? But you have to take out that negative one. It's going to change your sign. So try to do this, these eight, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.